Lisa wants to be part of this one because <clears throat> you were the link to the what I said earlier was there isn't even a convention without Les Paul. This, without the guitar, electric guitar, there isn't this, the evolution of sound and music. So how did you two get together and how did Paul initiate the introduction to Les Paul, the, the guitar you shot to begin your journey in this amazing book? Well, I had decided that I wanted to photograph Les Paul's I wanted to start, I'd moved to New York and I wanted to photograph famous guitar, so I may as well start see if Les Paul will let me photograph his guitar. So I started going down to the Iridium room and I would sit in the back in the bar where it was just individual stools and Paul came walking up in between the first show and the second get show. Get a drink. And I was staying for both shows to get his drink and um, I said, hey, I'm Lisa Johnson. I'm a photographer, I just moved here from Memphis, Tennessee. And I, you know, I photograph guitars. Do you think Les would let me photograph his guitar? So Paul looks at my pictures and he goes, well, let me take these and go see. So we take some back to, to Les and he comes back and he goes, yeah, Les said you can do it. Is that how it happened? It was kind of like that. I mean, she was kind of like looking at the guitar. She said, I really want to take pictures of that guitar. And I was like, I was like, well, uh, you know, go, I was like, go ahead, you know, just, just do it. But yeah, like, just but do it. just do it. But, uh, but, but. I think she wanted me to ask Les if it was okay, but I knew that it was perfectly fine to do because kind of anything was anything goes over there. He let he leaves the thing out on uh, on a stool. Normally he trips off trips over the cable and he broke at least five or six guitars, the heads off them. You know, so they're just kind of sitting there. He's not that worried about them because you know if they if they would get broken, there was. Uh, yeah. But Lisa wants a controlled environment as her photography evolved. She's got this lighting and background, and she turns these portraits like they're humans getting portraits taken of them. Yeah, but when I first when I when photographed she first, Les's... No, when, you, when you first started, the first stuff that like got she she had taken pictures of uh, of uh, Les's guitar, uh, my my double bass, Lou's oh. guitar, and she actually. Uh, hand painted all the colors in. She did a, uh, um, it was like art pieces. And it started Black out, and white photography. It was, it was black and white photography, and she would colorize them with, I, I suppose, watercolor? No, it's a special oil that you use on photographic prints. But it yeah, looked amazing. Look vintage. But when, but when uh, we saw that, then the, the race was And then was Les on. used to see me coming, and he'd go, there comes that girl who does that guitar art. The guitar art. Because he, he hadn't figured out my name yet. Yeah, guitar art. Yeah, I remember that. He got because... it from the beginning. And guess what? Now, he, he ended up writing the foreword for my book, thanks to you, making well, that happen in those days. Well, all... And guess what's happening now? The NAM Museum is going to have an exhibit of my work. And they have a whole wall. They asked me when I was touring the facility to figure out pieces. They said, do you photograph bases? I said, well, yes, I do. In fact, the first bass I photographed was Paul Lewinsky, who was Les Paul's upright bass player at the time when I photographed Les's guitar. And I've got several of his basses, and one even that it was a, it's a, a Gibson SG bass guitar. Well, that, Les that, signed that, the that, headstock. That, well, I mean, that was actually a Les Paul signature bass. Okay. I had an SG there as well, but okay, the one okay. uh, the one he signed. Uh, and you had like a 350-year-old upright bass well, with that crazy headstock on it. I got some old so stuff. I told them about you and they're so excited. Those images are going to be hanging in the NAM Museum now That's in the base be. section. That's Paul's awesome. Museum. So because you're so well versed in dealing with eccentric personalities, what was playing with Keith Richards on his solo record like? Uh, the thing crazy about Keith Richards is that he's he's not very eccentric. He's kind of like a very, normal. he's a real normal, uh, except the fact that he's highly intelligent, intellectual book nerd. Right. Nobody would ever know that he's like a, a, like just a bookworm, like historian, classical music lover. You know, more than you know, he's he's really kind of his his uh, his grandfather, who was really his uh, mentor, was the the doorman for the Royal Albert Hall wow. for all the classical concerts for every concert. Wow. His every person that went into the Royal Albert Hall to play for, I mean, I think it's like over 20 years. I mean, I knew it was for a long, long, long time. And, uh, you know, they all would see his grandfather, you know, I guess Gus. 
and uh, and he was the you know he was the guy that started Keith on his guitar. He was like good friends with Yehudi Menuhin, you know. So like he had a very there was like a lot of it wasn't just rock and roll. He had right. classical music in his life, and he was uh, you know he's. An unbelievable. He wanted upright on his record. He loves upright bass because he loves Willie Dixon. You know, the the who was really like the father of rock and roll in a way. You know, uh, yeah. of, of you know crossing over the rock. Uh, you know, Chuck Berry, all the early chess. He was the musical director for Chess Records, and he played acoustic bass. You know, exclusively. He never played electric bass. So uh, Keith always liked the upright bass, and so he he actually came in with his mother to see Les. Uh, uh, Keith didn't, uh, Keith's mother didn't actually believe he knew Les Paul. So she showed up to the gig at noon. Like before we got, we would get there at noon. She showed up at 11 o'clock, you know. Well, she was there before we got there. And I was like, who are these people? And they would, you know, like old couple sitting there. And it turned out to be Keith's mom. You know, I got her tea all day. She's listened to the whole sound check, which was eight hours. She came to the gig eight hours before the gig. And then Keith showed up, second set, hanging out with his mom, you know, a big table. And, um, you know, after we, he got up and he played, and the first thing he said when he came up, he was like, nice bass. I love that, you know? He just said, and, um, and then we played a tune. And then after, I just went to say hi to him. And uh, he said, oh, you know, give me your number, man. We're gonna, like, love to do some playing with you, blah, 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 you know? So I gave my number, and a year later, that's like Keith's kind of time frame. Yeah. <laughs> a year later. A year later. What time is it? It's a year yeah. later. It's a year right. later, and then, you know, so that was like 1999, right. and it's now 2016, yes. right? And now on the cover uh, of Bass Player Magazine, it says, yeah. Paul Nowinski rolling with Keith Richards. That's where it's that somewhere, issue. Somewhere there, I think let's, I have one. Let's see that issue. Rolling with Keith. Here's, here's, uh, and, I, and I was in New York recently, and, and I called photo. up Paul, and he's like, hey, I need a photo for this Bass Player Magazine article. Can you come over and take some pictures? They were they were happy with the photo. Oh, they loved the photo. I had sent them some other photos, and they were like, no, no, we're still waiting. But I mean, he's got, his, he's got his Parker Fly wooden bass there. I have all well, I mean, he's got such an eclectic, amazing I have a, I have a collection. tremendous fun collection. And, I love uh, you, pa Paul. I, I love Lisa Johnson. Thank you, Paul and Lisa. This is beautiful, beautiful, com compartmentalizing the love of music and connection and relationship all in one eight-minute interview.